And welcome back. The Canadian wheels of justice caught in a backlog. Courts across this country have been bogged down by delays related to COVID-19. But the Canadian Bar Association, the group that represents over 36,000 legal professionals, has penned a letter to the Prime Minister warning him that vacancies to federally appointed courts stand to make the situation worse. Let's take a look at the numbers. The Office of the Commissioner for Federal Judicial Affairs reports there are 88 vacancies across Canada's federally appointed courts. The Canadian Bar Association says some courts operate with 10 to 15 percent of judicial positions vacant. The Canadian Bar Association says it's not just the vacancies on the courts. The committees tasked with screening and recommending judicial candidates are also plagued with vacancies. The Committee for British Columbia, Nova Scotia, the Greater Toronto Area, Prince Edward Island, Yukon, and Canada's tax court are totally vacant. So how are these vacancies impacting Canada's justice system and what will it take to get those 88 spots filled? Joining me now are Carrie Simmons. She's the executive director of the Canadian Bar Association, BC branch. And Adrian Boudreau is partner with Soto LLP and a member of Soto's litigation group. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for being there because this is something that we're not talking about, uh, but is a great concern to Canada's chief justice. Richard Wagner also wrote a letter to Justin Trudeau, I think that was last month, it was leaked to the media, saying he is worried that this will create a crisis in the justice system. So vacancies on the bench and vacancies in the committees that are supposed to recommend candidates are vacant. So Kerry Simmons, you know, what is going on? Labor shortages or is the federal government just dragging its feet? Well, of course, when we're talking about uh, getting more judges, there's a number of things that have to happen. First of all, we have to have the judicial advisory committees, the committees that the review the applications, they have to exist. And right now in British Columbia, it doesn't exist. So there's no committee to review the applications. The second thing that has to happen is there needs to be sufficient applications that are going in to be reviewed. And we make sure that we are encouraging lawyers to apply and, and go through the application process. But what we're trying to understand is what's happening after that happens, between when the Judicial Advisory Committee makes their recommendations and the appointment time. Because that's the delay in government that we don't have an explanation for and we're waiting for. Well, you know, I, I, I think the Chief Justice may also be waiting for an answer to his letter that looked like the letter the Bar Association sent. But Adrian, you know, how are these vacancies affecting how courts function? Because, you know, in, in people's minds, you know, ju judicial appointments, it's all, all, you know, kind of gray area. They don't probably sit up at night and think about it. But what are you seeing in the trenches in terms of postponements or even cases getting thrown out? Yeah, so absolutely there is a tremendous impact on uh, cases going through the system. I can tell you that right now in Toronto, which is the region that I, I generally practice in, to get a short motion, so that's a motion of less than two hours, you have to wait for a hearing date into July of 2024. And that is not, uh, that sort of motion is not going to be a motion that's going to decide your case. That's sort of a an interim motion that you need to sort of get to the end of your case. So we're seeing tremendous delays in people being able to get into court and having their matters decided by a judge. Well, that's interesting. Interesting, you know, justice delayed, isn't it? Justice denied. Uh, that's uh, saying that we all understand, but um, you carry courts have been required to deal with cases within a period of. 30 months since the Supreme Court Jordan ruling. Uh, that was what, in 2016. So has that added even more pressure on the courts? Well, whether it's a criminal case where those time limits need to be uh, maintained or it's a family case or a civil case, the point is that the litigant, the person who's come to the publicly funded institution asking for something to be resolved, or in the case of a criminal matter where an accused is awaiting trial and the society 
expects that that case will be resolved. Those cases are now delayed. Um, people can't resolve and get the damages they're supposed to get in a trial. Uh, a person is a uh, family can't sort out their parenting arrangements because they're still waiting for their trial. Um, evidence is being lost. Evidence doesn't improve over time usually. Evidence is harder because uh, witnesses can't remember the more time passes. Um, or maybe somebody's passed away. These are the kinds of real impacts that happen when a case is uh, adjourned because no judge is available to hear it. So, Adrian, the Bar Association wrote a letter to the Prime Minister, uh, and, and, and again, so did the Chief Justice of Canada. What are you, what are you hoping for? I mean, it, 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 it's, it boggles the mind to think that they get a lot of warning judges, federal judges have to leave the bench when they're 75, so you know that. And on top of it, I'm told that they don't have to give a two-week notice, but it's a six-month notice uh, for a judge to leave the bench. So, you know, how long is, you know, what are you hoping for, for from these letters and how long have you been noticing these delays? Yeah, I think certainly uh, before the pandemic, uh, Everyone, everyone would always discuss about, oh, how long is your motion being scheduled out for? You know, when is the next available hearing date? And there were delays before the pandemic, but I feel that the pandemic has actually just sort of uh, made all of these issues worse because it created a tremendous backlog in all of our courts. So now we, we had a situation where we had a, a significant backlog before the pandemic. The pandemic just exacerbated that and now we have a situation where, as I said, you can't get a short motion until next year, and you can't get a long motion until October of 2024 in Toronto. So we've seen all of these problems just get worse and worse. And what I think everybody would like to see would be more capacity at the courts so people can get their cases in front of the judge and can get their matters determined in a timely manner. Because I, I agree with Carrie that people's lives are on hold while they're waiting to resolve these issues. So, so, Carrie, I don't have much time left, but I want to hear you. Former Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin warned about this years ago. So what will it take to get this settles, settled? Murderers going free, uh, nasty headlines. What do you think it will take for this problem to be resolved? The federal government process needs to be more streamlined once they get the recommendations from the Judicial Advisory Committees. And their methodology about appointing that also needs to be streamlined because it clearly is taking too long, whether we're talking about appointing judges or appointing people to the Judicial Advisory Committees. It's taking too long. It needs to be shortened up and streamlined. And that's, that's the difference maker.